Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. In this video we will be making a solar powered garden lamp and we will be modifying this uh, lamp here that runs from the mains power. As it is this lamp is meant to be used with an E27 uh, regular light bulb or a LED light bulb whatever you want to use but we will be removing the socket and just installing an LED. That way it would be easier to run it from the battery power. The only thing we have to consider is if our circuit can fit inside this 75mm uh, tube here. That's uh, approximately 3 inches. And then we need to mount the solar panels somehow. If you like my videos and you want to support my channel, you can use my Amazon affiliate links in the video description. It's completely free for you and it will give me a small percentage every time you buy something on Amazon. I also have a Patreon page if you want to support directly, but that's completely up to you. Regular solar powered garden lamps don't put out very much light at all. They typically just use a 20 milliamp white LED and uh, a few tiny solar cells. However, I want to make this one fairly bright, so we're going to use a 1 watt LED. This of course also means that we need to uh, get more power from the sun and we need to use larger solar panels. So I got some of these uh, cheap solar panels of uh, questionable quality from eBay, but I tested them and they, they do actually live up to the spec that they provided, surprisingly. So I want to 3D print uh, an arm and a plate that can hold these, uh, and then we can put it around the tube, so it will kind of sit at an angle on the side of the lamp. And I think we might have to use two, but we can do that, no problem. In the summer, one panel is plenty enough, uh, but in the winter, I guess, uh, we will have to use two if we want the light to be on for a uh, significant amount of time. We get around 90 to 120 milliamps from these panels uh, at 5 volts or 4.2 or whatever uh, the battery voltage is. And the LED uses 250 milliamps, roughly. So if we uh, don't have any losses, um, the amount of time these are in the, the sun, the same amount of time we can uh, have the LED turned on. In the summer, we probably have about 8 to 10 hours of uh, usable uh, sunlight onto the panel. Uh, so we could do with one panel and get a, at least 3 to 4 hours of light out of the LED. And in the winter it's going to be much, much lower than that, uh, so two panels are definitely needed. Say we want to power this LED for four hours at least, then we would of course need uh, a four watt hour battery. But there's going to be some losses in the system, uh, so we will need a bit more than that, so let's say at least five watt hours. Probably we also don't want to drain the battery entirely if there's, say, a few days without any sun, then the circuit shouldn't drain the lithium battery too far. And I am going to use a lithium ion battery. And if I use one of these uh, 18650 lithium ion batteries, uh, that gives around 10 watt hours, so uh, that should be fairly good enough. And I have some of these uh, salvaged ones from old battery packs, so I'll just take one. But of course uh, the lithium ion battery has a uh, maximum voltage of 4.2 volts, which is uh, way too much for uh, one single LED like this. So we'll need to regulate the voltage somehow, uh, but we don't have very much margin between the two, so I think something like a switch mode regulator will be the best uh, for this job. When the battery gets very low, uh, it will probably start to uh, drop the current, so the LED will dim a little bit. But since we have 10 watt hours instead of the 5 we need, uh, we can stay in the upper part of the, the battery's capacity. We shouldn't be uh, using it all the way up at 4.2 volts, because then the battery won't last as long, but if we can use it, say, between 4.05 and down to 3.65, then it should be uh, around what we need. It's probably okay to charge it uh, to a higher voltage because we will be 
draining it every day so it will be charged up and drained. It only starts to get really bad when you just charge it and you don't really use the power again so it stays at 4.2 volts for extended periods of time. But also the solar panels will put out something like 5 volts and uh, something like 90 to 120 milliamps. So we can't just connect this uh, and just make it charge all the time because that would overcharge the battery and shorten the lifetime uh, a lot. So it would die probably within a month or something if we did that. And also in the other end of the range we don't want to over discharge the battery because that will also damage it. So we will need some way of of turning the LED off when the the voltage gets too low. So we will have to come up with a circuit to do that. And of course uh, the first thing that came to my mind was to use a microcontroller. So something like a PIC16 F616 was the first that came into my mind. I have a bunch of those laying around and uh, it would fit uh, this circuit very nicely. You could also use an Arduino Nano or something like that. We could use the ADC to sample the battery voltage and determine when to switch in the solar panel and when to turn on the LED. And probably also use a light dependent resistor to detect when it's getting dark. We of course don't have to turn on the LED when there's uh, enough light outside. So I'm sure this would work fine but well when I was finished uh, drawing this I was thinking hmm, well I kind of always use microcontrollers uh, so maybe I should try and do it in a more analog way. Uh, it should be very easy with this uh, simple circuit. So I made another diagram here using uh, only op amps to control uh, the whole system and a few transistors of course. So if we say this is the solar panel here and we have the battery here then we need a transistor in between to make sure that uh, that we're not charging it all the time and we need to control that transistor. So if we imagine this is uh, this is off then the transistor will be uh, turned off because its uh, base is at the same potential as the emitter. If we want to turn it on we have to drag this low so we can do that using an NPN transistor and an op amp. So the op amp will uh, have a voltage reference say 1.25 volts on the non-inverting input then on the inverting input we have the battery voltage which we divide down and once this uh, exceeds the voltage reference it will uh, cut off and uh, turn off the transistor. Of course there is some uh, resistance in the battery and uh, all that kind of thing so it won't just turn off it will kind of ramp down so it will increase the resistance in the transistor when the battery gets charged. But since the current uh, is pretty low here, it's not going to be a problem that we are dissipating some energy in that transistor. So this op amp here is responsible for turning on and off the LED uh, according to if there's light or not. So when it gets dark outside, this resistor uh, will increase and the voltage will uh, drop. Once this drops below uh, the voltage reference, it will turn on this one and it will power this transistor which will uh, start up the switch mode power supply and turn on the LED. But if we have a, uh, a low battery voltage uh, this will be detected by this op amp. So if the voltage reference is the non-inverting input we sample again the battery voltage with the inverting input and once the voltage that we set here drops below the voltage reference, uh, we will turn off this uh, op amp here. Uh, it, will, it has been on until now, but there's a diode here, so it won't affect uh, this transistor. But when we turn it low, uh, it will uh, pull the current to ground instead of it going to this transistor here. We know that we have 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 volt drop from this point to ground. So as long as we choose a uh, diode with a lower drop, for example a Schottky diode, uh, that should work just fine. Um, that's the plan anyway. So the LED will simply always be connected up to the switch mode supply and we'll just disconnect the ground connection when we uh, don't want the LED to light up.
we just need to set the cutoff point here high enough that this circuit won't uh, drain the battery too low during the rest of the night. But it's only going to take a couple of milliamps, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Uh, this one will of course take much more, around 250 milliamps. And to create that voltage reference, we'll just be using a voltage reference IC, which takes the battery input and puts out a voltage reference. Um, and we have a few capacitors. One thing to consider about these other amps are that they have to work uh, down to ground. So the output has to be able to drop all the way to ground. That's very uh, important to turn off uh, the transistors. And the input has to be able to register near ground as well. Uh, probably not uh, all the way down to ground, but at least if we use a voltage reference of 1.25, it has to be able to operate in that range. The upper rail of the op amp uh, we don't really care that much about though, so um, that should be fine. I looked at a few data sheets and I saw that the LM324 op amp uh, probably suits our needs. It's a uh, quad op amp in a dip package and uh, we only need three, so that should be fine. So now let's go ahead and build this up in the breadboard and uh, then we can test it and see if it works as intended. To start with I'll just use um, the power supply as the solar panel and perhaps, yeah, perhaps we can use a battery uh, as the battery. Or we could also just use another power supply for this. So I went and calculated all the resistor values here. Actually these values have to be pretty precise when we are working with a lithium ion battery. Because we have from, uh, say we use 4.05 volts as the maximum and 3.65 as the lowest. It doesn't take much deviation in these resistors to throw it off completely. So, uh, and also the op amps has some uh, tolerance, so we will probably have to measure it and then adjust accordingly. But these values will be uh, an initial uh, guess. Also, I noticed over here that I, I used the battery voltage uh, f for this part of the circuit. Of course, I shouldn't do that. I should use the voltage reference so that this doesn't change with battery voltage. And then I can't use the reference directly as the non-inverting input, so I just have to divide it into. Then when the inverting gets above that, um, it will turn this off. And it will go all the way up to 1.25. I kind of did a rough estimate of what the um, resistance of this LDR will be at the point where I want to turn on the light. It seems somewhere around 500 kilo ohms. So uh, we're dividing by two, so I just have to make R7 500 kilo ohms as well. Perhaps I should put a, um, a trim part here so we can adjust it. And the transistor tester project that I made earlier comes in handy for when you can't remember the pinouts of your transistors. So I think it's this. And it is. So it's uh, emitter base collector seen from the flat side here. So I built the circuit up on the breadboard here. I did have one other mistake uh, on the schematic though. This op amp had the inverting and non-inverting input swapped, so it should have been like this. But I found that this configuration didn't actually work. Uh, this op amp wasn't able to pull it all the way to ground. So I had to switch this out with a transistor. So something like this. Now this is a regular diode. So we have 0.6 or 0.7 volts drop across it and we have the same here to turn on the transistor. So that requires 1.2 volts at least. It might not be necessary with this one since we, we should have less than that across this transistor. But just to be on the safe side I added it in. And now we use this transistor to pull it low instead of just using the op amp. And now actually we also have to switch these back. Uh, just to invert the operation of the op amp. So I tested the circuit just using a regular LED instead of the switch mode power supply here. And it does work, at least uh, the LED can turn on when the light gets low. 
I don't know about the cutout voltage and I don't know if the solar panel will actually charge the batteries and if the charge will stop so we have to test that now so if we power the circuit from 4 volts you can see uh, with the LED off it uses 3.3 milliamps so that's acceptable and the voltage reference of uh, 1.25 volts uh, uses basically uh, 0 milliamps and here is with the LED on uh, of course we can't count on this but it does take a little bit more current to turn on the transistors but most of the extra current is taken by the white LED here of course when we get the high power LED we will be pulling around 250 milliamps now so over here we have the circuitry for the charging the solar panel and the battery I haven't hooked up the solar panel yet but we will do that later over here we have the circuitry responsible for detecting the light and turning on the LED and down here we have the circuitry for measuring the low battery voltage and then turning off the LED if it is too low and you can see if we cover this it does indeed light up and this is with a battery voltage of 4 volts so if we lower that battery voltage to so say 3.7 volts then it should still work uh, and we'll test it, I just changed it yes so my desired cutoff voltage was uh, 3.65 if I remember correctly so we'll try to put that and now it it doesn't turn on so let's see how far we have to go it's very close though because it worked at 3.7 how about 6.6 6? no 3.67 no so 3.68 and it turns on so the cutoff is somewhere between 3.67 and 3.68 it might be a little high but we can always adjust it later I think it is fine as an initial uh, setup here. So now at least we know that the battery cutoff also works. So to test if the solar panel works, we will need an extra power supply. So I hooked this up uh, to simulate the battery now, because it doesn't have a constant current uh, limit. Then I'll use the Agilent power supply to um, act as a solar panel because I can set the current so I can set 200 milliamps for example at 5 volts so this uh, should power the circuit and when we turn this up to around 4.05 volts it should cut off the other power supply so I've set this power supply to 3. Point, uh, yeah 8 9 volts we know this is uh, it's going to make it work and uh, this power supply I've set for 5 volts we can see when it's off we get the 3.851 volt from the other power supply if we now turn on that other power supply simulating that the solar panel is providing a charge we can see that this power supply now jumped up to 4.1 volt um, and we can measure exactly what it is and it is 4.1 volt exactly so uh, again I'm happy with that I aimed for 4.05 but this is good enough also we can see now that uh, that power supply is uh, providing some of the current if I now turn up the other power supply you can see now this one switched off it says minus one uh, milliamp and you can see even if I unplug it it says the same thing so it is completely off now and even when I turn on the LED it doesn't provide anything so it seems like our battery charging circuit also works it will just cut off when it reaches uh, 4.1 so if I turn this down again to below 4.1 
you can see now it it turns on and it now draws current from the oil supply I think now I'm quite confident that this is going to work so I will uh, put it onto a PCB uh, that will fit inside the tube and then we can uh, we can uh, put it in there and we can test it so I went and transferred the design from the breadboard to a printed circuit board and I just found uh, one silly mistake actually when I fired it up because it uh, when it gets starker it starts flashing instead of just turning on or off because I didn't have any hysteresis on the uh, op amp here so I added that now I will show that on the schematic later also I was using a uh, 2N3906 PNP transistor to switch in the solar panel uh, to the battery but actually that wasn't rated for that amount of current so I changed it for a BC328 which can take uh, 0.6 amps anyway we have the solar panel input here the battery connection this is to the LED and here we have the LDR I just mounted it on the PCB now but I need to uh, pull some wires out for that of course so when I connect up this battery it should hopefully work so it's uh, it's very light in here right now but if I cover the LDR the LED should turn on and it does and also if I kill the lights Oh, now it starts flashing again, but uh, of course the LDR shouldn't be facing the LED. <laughs> so like that. So when we have light, there's nothing, and when we turn it off, it turns on. I will mount the LDR on the underside of the solar panel so it won't take light from the uh, LED directly. That would be uh, silly, because then <laughs> when this turns on, it it will turn itself off again. So now we just need to confirm that the charging works. So the battery here is charged to 4.04 volts. And the power supply up here is going to simulate the solar panels. They will have uh, roughly uh, an open circuit voltage of 6.3 volts. So I set that uh, as the voltage. And then the current will be somewhere around 200 to 300 milliamps. So I just put uh, 300. So when I turn this on, we should see the battery start charging. And it looks like it is charging. And we can see the voltage now drops on the solar panels here. And it's supplying the 300 milliamps. It probably won't be 300 milliamps uh, when it's out in the sun. But it's just to test that it can indeed handle that uh, amount of current. And I checked this before they don't get very hot the transistors so that should be fine and now you can see it starts uh, shutting off and the current is dropping it's because the battery has reached the full charge at least the charge that we decided you can see it I aim for uh, 4.0 Five, but it's a little bit higher it's actually 70 millivolts higher but it's still within the limitations of the battery so it should be fine and now the transistor might get a little bit warmer yes but I can still touch it so it's uh, no problem it's getting warmer because now it has to drop uh, more than 2 volts and before it was only about 500 millivolts but also it's not for long because the current is rapidly dropping so I just tried to hook up a very bad battery here so that we can uh, see when it's going to cut out so it shouldn't drop further down than 3.6 uh, and I just want to verify that I'm using a crappy battery so it, it goes much faster we of course need to turn off the power supply
and now we just wait for it to drop. So the light is starting to get very dim now and it's uh, right around 3.65 volts. And if I just add a little bit of load across the battery, you can see it turns off immediately. And if you just watch that voltage, you can see that it turns on right around 3.64 or 3.63. And if we go back to the schematic here, the changes that I made are that this transistor is now a BC328. And then to get the hysteresis on the LED so it doesn't uh, start flickering when it gets uh, a little bit dark outside, uh, I just added a resistor from here to here. And that was a uh, 100K. So when it's getting darker outside, the resistance of this resistor increases, so the voltage on the inverting input will drop. And once it drops below the set point here, the uh, output will turn on, and that will add a little bit of voltage to the set point, so it will give it a jump up. So if we imagine the set point is here, and the voltage on the inverting input drops, as soon as it hits this, this will jump up. So it has to be lighter again for it to uh, turn off. And then I also added a 220 nanofarad capacitor right here to ground. And that also smoothens out uh, a little bit. So if uh, a car headlight or something hits it just when turning around or something, it won't just uh, turn off immediately. It takes about a half a second to one second. I guess we could increase this a little bit more if we wanted, uh, if, if the delay should be greater. So, But apart from these changes, all the rest is the same, and I use the same uh, values here. So if anybody wants to make one of these, I'll put the files up on my website and you can find a link in the description of the video. So all that's left to do now is just to put it into the lamp itself and then uh, go outside and test it. So here you can see the 3D printed parts that I made. I made a tray to hold the solar panels, which I filled with the silicone, so it should be watertight. And then I made a bracket to go around the lamp, which is screwed together with the screws. And then it has a bolt through it on a pivot point so you can adjust the angle of the solar cells. And here's just a picture of where it's going to be used. And here I captured the moment where the light turns on. It looks to be very light outside still, but it's actually uh, pretty dim and the light is fading very quickly. So after 20 minutes to half an hour, it's, it's noticeably dark. And here's a few pictures of what it looks like when it's completely dark. So that was it for this project and uh, I hope you liked it. One thing I forgot to mention is that uh, R7 here, I changed that to 4.7 mega ohms because when the LDR sits on the underside of the solar panel, it's always in the shade and it would turn on the light uh, too soon. With the 4.7 meg it might still be a little too soon but it's just a matter of 20 minutes or something so i like it the way it is now if you want the schematics or the pcb files i'll put that on my website and if you want some of the 3d printed parts uh, i'll put links to those as well in the description but to use the whole thing it kind of requires that you have a lamp that's five centimeters so thanks for watching this video and uh, i hope to see you in the next one and if you liked it, please give it the thumbs up. See ya.